So in this video, we're going to continue talking about arithmetic based instructions by taking a look at the subtraction instruction. And it actually turns out that it, subtraction is a little bit easier than addition. If you think about it, there's not really an easy way to subtract two numbers and end up with something that is bigger than a register can contain, right? By the definition of subtraction, things will keep on getting smaller and smaller. So we don't really have to worry too much about that sort of idea. What we do have to worry about is the idea of negative numbers. But what you'll see is that negative numbers really aren't that scary. They work in a very similar way to decimal numbers. And you'll find that in most cases, we don't really need to even think about the fact that there are negative numbers involved. But there are a few different intricacies that we can discuss that come up as we start subtracting numbers and getting negative results. So to start off, let me show you something really simple, just to get an idea of how this instruction works. So we're gonna move into EAX the value five, into EBX the value three, and I'm gonna sub EAX and EBX. So sub is the subtraction operation. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the value of EBX and I'm going to do EAX minus EBX. And I store the result in EAX. So in this case, it would be five minus three, which is equal to two. That gets sorted to EAX and then we will be done. So this is a very simple example, and I just want to show you that it does indeed work, just that way we have the intuition about how the subtraction operator is really working for us. So let's go into ASM, we'll break out start. We are going to run, and we are going to step through these instructions. And when I do an info register EAX, you see that I do actually get the result of two, which matches exactly what I expected for five minus three. So that's a very simple example, nice and easy. We now see how the subtraction operator works. Let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's flip them, three and five. Now I could have just subtracted EBX and EAX, keeping them the same. I'm just doing that so that everything gets stored in EAX just to make the interrupts work and make everything simpler. So this is another example. And in this case, what will happen is we get three minus five, which would be negative two. Let's see what happens when we have a negative number in our subtraction. Well, what we'll find is the following. We'll do a layout ASM, we'll break at start, and we'll run. Let's step through these instructions. And let's see what we have in EAX. Well, do you see that we get negative two, right? Which is great, that's exactly what we expected. But notice that the value is maybe not quite what we expected. It's a whole bunch of Fs and then the value E. And if you think about the way that subtraction will generally work, this does make some sense. What we're seeing here is we're seeing essentially the complement that represents this negative number. Now, one question that you might have is, how did GDB know to print negative two? Because if you think about it, this has two interpretations, right? It could be negative two, but it could also be a very, very large number. So how do we know which it is? And the answer to that is we look at our E flags. Our E flags are going to set a few different flags here. The carry and auxiliary flag are set. The carry flag actually serves two functions in x86. It's both representing a carry as well as a borrow in subtraction. And if you do the subtraction, you'll actually see that there is a borrow. When we subtract three from five, we have to keep borrowing, which is why we get all of these Fs here. It's really just the result of continually borrowing until we reach the end of the register. Now the more important one is SF, which is the sign flag. When the sign flag is set to one, it indicates that the operation produced a negative output, in this case, negative two. That's how GDB knows that this value should be represented as negative two and not just some large value. It's because that sign flag has been set. So it understands that this is a negative number. Now you might be wondering, okay, how do we work with negative numbers? Is there something different? Is there something special? And it turns out that they actually work very similarly to decimal negative numbers. What I mean by that is consider the following example. What if after I subtract these values, I then moved into EBX the value two, and then I did an add of EAX EBX. So remember negative two is instead of EAX right now. I put positive two in EBX. I'm gonna take negative two and add it to two. The result that I would expect here is zero. Now, just like thinking about the values that were stored, you might be able to intuitively understand that this is going to work, but it's gonna be helpful for us to just sort of see step-by-step step what happens, right? So we know that these first three operations give us the value of negative two in EAX. Now, how about as I move next two inside of here? Now think about this. If I add two to this big long register here, 
we would have e, which turns to f, which then turns to zero, right? So you know, if you add two to e, you would end up with zero. So let's see. So if I step one, I info register eix, I get exactly that. I get the value of zero. So do you see that that actually did work exactly the way that we expected it to work when it came to adding a positive and negative number together? And if you could intuitively think about it, you'll see that this result carries over to other types of ideas too. If this value was three instead, it would be e goes to f, then goes to zero, then goes to one, right? So do you see that it really does flow the exact same way as negative numbers do in decimal values? So really these numbers work the exact same way as what we would expect them to. So there's not really any sort of special treatment required here. We're able to add the numbers, subtract the numbers, we'll get the same sorts of results as we usually do. That's the beauty of the complement notation for negative numbers. The only real situation where we are going to need to look at E flags is if we need to determine if a result was negative, in which case we would check to see if the sign flag was set. So that'd be one way that we might be able to check that sort of operation. With that, you now understand the idea of subtraction. So we've had addition and subtraction. We're getting our arithmetic operators nice and set in stone. And this is going to help us with being able to develop x86 programs. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.